this. <laughs> Hello, so gooders. Today we will be talking about My Hero Academia. A fantastic anime that I believe every person on this earth should at least try to watch once. I personally could go on and on about how good I think this show is, but that will be the topic of a different video. Today we will be focusing on a theory I have been working with for a while now, that focuses on quirks, aka the superpowers human beings are born with in the My Hero universe. Now if you haven't seen this anime already, stop watching this video and go binge the first three seasons. We will be discussing some minor spoilers and I can't recommend this show enough, so with that, you have been warned. So in the world of My Hero, as aforementioned, people are born with quirks, giving them unique abilities and opening the world up to the reality of not only heroes but also villains. In the show, we are given plenty examples of both heroes and villains using these powers in interesting and thought-provoking ways. That being said, well, there are some heroes who seem to have abilities that don't, by any means, fall into the traditional context of what their powers should allow them to do. With all the evidence I've seen in the first three seasons of this show, it would seem that some heroes and some villains actually have access to more than just one quirk. And no, I'm not just talking about Nomu's or All for One. Now, I know it would seem to fly contrary to what the show would lead us to believe, but let me provide some evidence to clarify. For starters, let's take a look at everyone's favorite meth head, I mean sleep deprived hero, Eraserhead. The homeroom teacher of class 1A, Shota Aizawa, has a quirk that allows him to erase the quirks of any person he's looking at, so long as that person remains in his sights. This quirk has proven to be extraordinarily useful, allowing him to hold off entire leagues of villains by himself, proving him to be one of the coolest heroes in the entire show, at least if you ask me. That being said, it would seem that this isn't his only ability, as numerous times we've seen Eraserhead use the capture weapon around his neck in various unexplainable circumstances. It would seem that he actually has the ability to telekinetically levitate clothing, hair, and weapons as long as they're touching his body, so long as his quirk is active, of course. Now, without mentioning spoilers, I can say that I have done a fair amount of research on this, and I've even read a bit further into the manga and wiki, and I can tell you with certainty that this has never been addressed. He just seems to have this strange secondary ability that isn't tied to his initial quirk at all. But he isn't the only hero to have this strange secondary quirk, as I've dubbed them and my conspiracy of multiple quirks actually has more than just one example to stand on. Take for example, the villain Stain. His officially stated quirk allows him to paralyze his targets for a predetermined amount of time, as long as he's able to ingest even a drop of their blood. So tell me how then is the hero killer able to jump entire buildings in one leap? That should definitely not be possible for a normal human, no matter how hard they train. Even Aizawa himself couldn't perform feats of athleticism this great, as he usually winds up using his capture tape to sling up and down buildings much like Spider-Man. It would seem that Stain has some kind of secondary ability that boosts his own physical abilities or at least puts a spring in each of his muscles, allowing him to jump high and slice hard. Now look, I know very well that these abilities could simply be explained away by saying the show runs on quote unquote anime logic, meaning that everyone can perform crazy impossible feats. But if one does choose to use that explanation, then how could All Might sit there and tell Deku that a quirkless person has no chance of becoming a hero? Hell, Stain hardly needs his power to kill people, as is clearly shown in his confrontations in the manga and anime. He uses his power mostly to torture and monologue over his victims, after he's already dominated them with insane physical abilities, swordsmanship, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. See, rather than just chalking these abilities up to anime logic, I prefer to explain these abilities in a way that the canon allows us to. Nearly everywhere you look in the world of My Hero, there are heroes with abilities that would seem to qualify as inherently separate quirks, meaning that people can, and do, 
have two different quirks. And to solidify this theory as not only possible, but damn near confirmed in the actual story, look no further than the fan favorite character, Shoto Todoroki. See, he was actually born with two separate quirks, one from his father, allowing him to shoot fire from one hand, and the other from his mother, allowing him to conjure ice with the other. Todoroki practically confirms that someone can be born with more than just one quirk, meaning that characters like Stain and Eraserhead probably have these abilities as inherited secondary quirks from their parents. For most people, these quirks end up being combinations of their parents' quirks, Take for example Katsuki Bakugo, whose quirk is a direct combination of his parents' quirks. Bakugo's mom can secrete glycerin from her skin freely, and Bakugo's father has naturally acidic and flammable sweat. However, he can't force the acidic compound out of his skin at will. He has to sweat it out manually. Bakugo's quirk is a direct combination of these two, allowing him to produce both explosive sweat and secrete it at will. To contrast, heroes and villains like Todoroki, Stain, and Aizawa differ from him in that their quirks aren't fusions of their parents' two quirks, but are actually two entirely separate quirks that can be used separate from one another. And if you're wondering how these secondary quirks could go by unnoticed for so long, well, just consider what All Might tells Deku back when he's first registering for classes. He mentions that many people wind up changing their quirk descriptions as they live and come to fully understand what their quirks can actually do, meaning that many people live and discover the full range of their quirks throughout the course of life, and some heroes wind up having access to two entirely separate abilities. So boom, there you go, your favorite world of superpowered heroes just got two times as fantastic. Or dare I say it, quirky. Who knows, maybe if this theory gains enough steam, Kohei Horikoshi will address it and explain how certain characters have the abilities that they do, despite these abilities not being explicitly mentioned in their quirk descriptions. Anyways, this is a theory I've been mulling over in my head for a while, and I just thought that it'd be interesting to share it and see what you guys think. I would really appreciate a comment with your thoughts down below, because I really love engaging with you guys, it's the best part of this job for me. Likes and subscriptions also help, and if you're interested, I have plenty more content in the description down below. With that, I will leave you with my age-old reminder to go out there and keep on loving good stuff.